uh, welcoming the uh, the next presenter, uh, the paper number 32. So paper number 32 from, from uh, Yosei University, Korea. So yep. the title of the presentation is uh, Autonomous Operation of a Robot Dog for Point Cloud Data Acquisition for uh, Scaffolds. Um, mm -hmm. So Mr. Chung, I guess. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the floor is yours. You have eight to 10 minutes. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, then I'll start my presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Duo Chong and I'm a PhD student from Yonsei University in Republic of Korea. Today I'm going to introduce a new framework for automating... <laughs> okay, today I'm going to introduce a new framework for automating the point cloud data acquisition of scaffolds using a robot dog. Well, before I start, I gotta say that I have more contents in this presentation compared to my paper because after I submitted the paper, I made some more progress. So this presentation is right out the oven and I think you guys are very lucky to hear it. Now I'll start my presentation. Oh, and these are my co-workers for this research. But I can't move on the feet. Okay, this is the contents from a presentation. So, construction industry is dangerous. Everyone knows this as a fact, and I'm pretty sure lots of people will talk about how construction site is dangerous in their introduction. So I'll just skip this and talk about scaffolds. Scaffolds are an essential factor for all kinds of construction sites. And at the same time, scaffolds are one of the major risk factors in construction safety management. This is because usually, well, compared to permanent structures, such as buildings, which are already a goal for the construction site itself, there are lack of information, their lack of motivation, and their lack of interest for establishing a thorough inspection system for temporary structures like scaffolds, usually because it takes lots of time and money. So using mobile robots to automate the scanning process, so would add repeatability to the inspection process, and it could reduce time and cost, Leading to, more, leading to establishing more frequent and more thorough inspection system. So I propose a new framework to fully automate the laser scanning process for scaffold point clouds using a robot dog. My system, my framework can be divided into three parts. First, data acquisition and mapping process. Second, real-time scaffold detection and registration process. Third, scan planning and navigation process. I used ROS, Robot Operating System, to integrate all the nodes I created. So this is the structure for the proposed framework. And data acquisition and mapping process includes sensors and 3D slab. So this is basically scanning itself. Sensors get the data, and 3D slab registers the data. Real-time scaffold detection and registration includes bird eye projection and scaffold detection. So this is basically using the 3D point cloud map to understand the environment. Scan planning and navigation. This includes scan planner and motion planner. Scan planner automatically generates scanning points and motion planner moves the robot to the scanning points by sending commands to the hardware. So let me introduce my scanning platform. So I used Auster OS1 128 mobile LiDAR and MicroStrain IMU sensor. And to give mobility to these sensors, I used Unitry A1 robot dog. 3D SLAM, simultaneous mapping and localization algorithm, is used for detection, uh, used for localization of the robot and registration of point clouds. This registered point clouds becomes an evidence for a robot to understand the environment. And at the same time, it works as a result of the scanning itself. So I used LeoSAM, a 3D SLAM algorithm based on LiDAR and IMU for the study. Now I'll talk about real-time scaffold detection and registration process. So obviously the robot needs to know where the scaffold is to automate the scanning process of scaffolds. 
And since I use LiDAR and uh, SLAM, I'm going to use point cloud to detect and register scaffolds. But the problem is 3D point clouds has very high computational costs. So it's very challenging to make this detection algorithm in real time. That's why I applied bird eye view projection to 3D SLAM. The idea is simple. The idea is to project the 3D SLAM registered point clouds into 2D image by projecting it by in XY coordinate. So 3D point clouds are converted into 2D bird eye view image and 3D features are represented as pixel value. And, uh, and YOLO v5, a well-known deep learning based detection algorithm is applied to bird eye view images to detect and register scaffolds. Well, so by using this method, real-time detection of scaffold location with high accuracy is possible, but the real strengths are rapid detection of scaffold point clouds is easily possible as we can see in the figure. So it's easily possible. It's just, we can just extract the point clouds inside the bounding box, then, it's, then we can just detect scaffolds. <laughs> this could be used for real-time evaluation of data acquisition process, as we can see in this figure. Also, besides detection, I use SLAM-based bird view for real-time high map. And also I used raw point cloud-based bird eye view for easy obstacle avoidance, which is actually the classical use of bird eye view. Now I'll talk about scan planning and navigation process. This is the flow chart for scan planning. So if scaffolds are not detected, then robot assumes that there are not enough data to detect scaffolds because if there really are no scaffolds at all, then we are not gonna use this program at all. So we assume that there are not enough scaffolds, there are not enough point clouds and we perform pre-scanning motion to get more point clouds. After the scaffold is detected, target scaffold is selected based on the distance and scanning point is decided and robot moves to the scan point and robot turns to the scaffold and robot performs scanning motion. And if enough points are registered, then robot moves on to the next scaffold and it re repeats the process until every scaffold is finished. Scanning, scanning points. Scan points are generated like this. So scanning distance, which means the distance between robot and the scaffolds, uh, optimal distance for a robot and the scaffolds while scanning, is calculated based on scaffold height and LiDAR's vertical field of view and robot dog's maximum pitch. And floor grids are extracted based on height map and all floor grids within scanning distance is selected as scan point candidates. And as we can see in the figure, scan point is chosen between scan point candidates by these two rules. And well, I got to explain about scanning motions. Scanning motion is just using, just adjusting the robot dog's joints, row and pitch to increase the field of view for mobile LiDAR. So pre-scanning motion aims to get as many points as possible like this. And scanning motion aims to get higher points, upper points as possible because upper points are always harsher than lower points because well, robot dogs, my robot dog is kind of short and because of the limitation of field of view, the points are not, upper points cannot be registered while walking. So now I talked about my method and now I'll talk about experiments. This is the performance for scaffold detection model. We can see that we have a very small training data set, 300 images, but even though actually all, most of the scaffolds look alike when we look at the top. So we can see that we have an acceptable performance for to use in the field. And of course this could be improved if I gather more data, which I already did, and I'm gonna retrain it when I go back to Korea. Two minutes, two minutes left. Okay, this is, well, and most importantly, I, I applied my framework into real world outdoor construction, construction test bed like this. We can see that the scan planning framework works well without any introduction, intervention of human, work, human controls. So it, this is fully automated and dynamic. And this, this figure shows that, shows the trajectory of the robot in the right video. And this is the results. So we can see the robot dog automatically gathered 3D, 3D on-site scaffold point cloud data like this. This, this data can be used for, for example, auto, autonom autonomous BIM generation or for regulation checking, which are both studied in our, in our lab. 
So for conclusions, I prove this, these are my contributions. I propose a new framework to fully automate the laser scanning process for scaffold point clouds using a robot dog with, by focusing a specific construction component, which would be scaffolds, without any prior knowledge such as scaffold location or like BIM or construction site map. So as far as I know, there are no previous study that attempted to fully automate the scanning process by using a robot dog, focusing on this specific construction component. And most importantly, I implemented the proposed method on a real world outdoor site. So this is the end of my presentation. And thank you for listening. And if you have any question, you can ask me right now or you could contact me by email. And thank you again for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Trump. Um, uh, maybe we have time for one or two questions from the audience, if there's any. Hi, Rongpo. Um, thank you very much. I very enjoyed this. What is interesting compared to the previous presentation is that you used the LiDAR. Um, and uh, I was wondering your, what was your thought about the quality of the data you got with this uh, and uh, you know, how you would compare it, for example, with data that would have been acquired with the terrestrial laser scanner. Okay, so, well, first I used mobile LiDAR and SLAM, which has very, which has comparatively low quality data compared to TLS, which is a fact, and it can be replaced. But, well, terrestrial laser scanners take like an hour, 30 minutes to an hour to get one scan, but mobile LiDAR can get the scan, mobile LiDAR can, well, get the scan in real time, so we can know the real time on site, the progress of scaffolds. So it could be more, it, it could have more utility in construction site, especially in temporary structures. Also, well, it's true that, yeah, it's true that the, there are limitations in the quality of the data, but even though I, I see that this is usable if, and well, usable for at least, is this, this data quality is proven as usable for, for example, as I already said, BIM generation, which could be saw, which could be in we seen in our previous studies, mm -hmm. and well, besides that, uh, our test bed is kind of narrow. So the third scaffold, which has kind of low quality data, it was impossible to have a thorough scanning, mm -hmm. scan planning. So that's why the third third data is kind of has a low quality compared to other two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe one more question from the audience, if there's any. Thank you for, uh, for the presentation. Um, I'm thinking about, um, you know, autonomy uh, that you brought into a scanning process and, and the fact that you can pragmatically decide on a number of metrics that matter. For example, completeness of the capture, for example, the accuracy of the capture, guiding to make sure your scan is at a specific distance against the objects of, uh, that are being scanned. Can you speak to um, whether you've investigated uh, the accuracy and completeness of the capture as a function of your autonomy for the uh, process? And second one is, I'm wondering about the uh, use case of a scaffolding. I mean, the examples that you have um, are pretty interesting, but I'm thinking, you know, scaffolding, you probably go higher elevations and then, you know, the fact that you're operating your robot on the ground is going to provide more limitations in terms of the field of view and the fact that the scene is already cluttered, you're going to get occlusion. Would it make sense maybe to also investigate uh, the usage of a LiDAR mounted drone? that can potentially capture more comprehensive capture. And methods that you're developing would apply the same. So your method is independent of the platform. So if you can speak to those two, one metrics that they can use to measure accuracy, completeness, and things of that nature in the data capture. Second one is the form factor of the device itself. Okay, that was a very sharp question. First, I'll, first I'll explain the metrics. I kind of keep the... I kind of skipped the explanation due to time, but these are the metrics. So 
The metrics are the number of number of scaffold points, number of scaffold upper points in the system in in the registered point cloud. So, as I said earlier, because of the field of view that you already mentioned, robot dog suffers from getting upper points because it's brown robot, and because of that, my metrics for scanning depends on the number of upper points, which which is defined as the number of points under max, under minus two meters of maximum height. Yeah, so I talked, to, so this is the metric I used for the evaluation. And also for, as you said, the, the robot dog has a limitation for, for, well, scanning high buildings or high scaffolds because it's on the ground. Well, it, it would be better if I use a bigger robot or I could, or if I use a, wider vertical FOB LIDAR, for example, was zero. But even though there will be a limitation, and I think that limitation will be probably in, in, in my scanning platform settings is probably about 50 meters, 15. And if I change the LIDAR, I think I can cover to like 25, 30. But it's true that the scaffold is higher than that. It's impossible to do it with raw dog. But so as you said, Drone and light, light drone-based lidar data acquisition could be a good solution, but there are some problems in drone-based lidar data acquisition. First, drone, well, if you put it in another way, in for getting lower points, robot robot dog is better, or robots in ground robots are better because drones there. Well, deploying a drone in a low level has very many safety issues. And also, there are lots of limitations, there are lots of regulations for deploying a drone in construction sites. Like drone could crash somewhere, or drone, there will, there will be, might, there might be some, some kinds of dangers. And besides the dangers, well, there are many regulations from the states okay. for deploying a drone. So I think robot dogs and drone could be used together, but drones cannot entirely replace robot dog. Thank you. Okay, I think the time is really uh, limited and the time is up. We have to move on to the last presenter of this, uh, this session. Thank you again very much, uh, Mr. Chan, for your presentation.